So the real question here is when does having high leverage, being an outlier, actually end up meaning that this observation is going to be influential on our estimated regression? And so here's another example. We'll say that the blue point is an outlier, but it's not necessarily an outlier with regard to x. It doesn't have high leverage. Now this is what the fitted line would look like with the full data set, and this is what it would look like after. And again, you can see that this outlier did not have a large influence on the fitted model. Now, the way that we need to think about this is when we're talking about having multiple predictors, right? When we're thinking about it in the context of multiple dimensions, we need to find observations that are outliers along multiple, that cut across multiple dimensions. And so here we can see, again, this is our covariates, and this point with high leverage will be outside of the cloud of the observed x values. This blue point has high leverage because it's outside the cloud of the covariates. In the sense that it is abnormal, an abnormal representation of the relationship that most of the other points seem to be following. And the way that we're going to quantify whether or not an, observa an observation has high leverage, meaning it has high potential influence, is by using hat values. And we're going to go beyond just looking at scatter plots and trying to look for outliers, and we're going to actually quantify how much leverage an observation has. And again, that quantity of interest is going to be a hat value. And really, again, I don't want to go through the specifics of what exactly each thing is in the equation first. I want to highlight that this is distinguishing how close this observation is away from the mean, so the center of the cloud, as well as trying to get a handle on how far away all the other observations are away from the mean. So that's what's in our numerator and our denominator. Essentially, this is just like an average of how far away this one observation is from the center of our x's in comparison to all of the other ones. Again, this measures the distance from the center of the cloud of points in our x space. Our outcome, y, are not involved in determining leverage at all. So again, this is concentrating on outliers that cut across our multiple dimensions of predictors. Leverage is specifically a statement about an outlier in our x or our covariate space. And as you would imagine, a higher hat value is going to be equated with a higher potential influence or higher leverage, right? That observation is farther away from the center of cloud points in our covariate space. So we can do this really simply in R. And what I am going to do is I am doing this first by hand. I do not expect you to do that. And then finally, I'm going to check my answer in line seven and eight. And this is something that you very much can and are expected to know how to do. So I'm just going to skip straight to the bottom and show you that, in fact, if you did it the way that I did it, you would get the same answer. But again, please don't concentrate on this too much. All I'm doing is essentially creating exactly what R is doing in the background. So I think what's really consequential here is how do we determine if an observation is potentially committing undue influence on our estimates. So h values are always going to be bounded between 1 over n and 1. Now, importantly, when we sum up our hat values, this is going to equal the number of predictors plus 1. So if, in our example, before we did sum hat, we'd get four. Now, why was that? And that was because we had three predictors. Now, another thing to note is that the average hat value is just going to be the sum 
over n, right? Now we can compare each individual hat value to the average. And if it's much larger, then the point had high leverage. And if not, then we'd likely conclude that it didn't have much potential to impact our estimates. And we can often use the criteria of two of times k plus one over n or about three k plus one over n as a guide for high leverage typically as well. Now, this by no means is a steadfast rule, and I don't mean to make you think that. This is, again, going to be in the eye of the beholder, and this is just a measure with which we are going to make a judgment call off of.